Uh, my name is P.K. Basu. I'm the author of a book called Asia Reborn, the first comprehensive economic and political history of the whole of Asia. And uh, my question is this. I also teach uh, economic history to uh, students in uh, several business schools. My question is this. Why is it that during the years that your family ruled India, India's per capita income was growing less than the world average. And yet, in the years since your family relinquished the Prime Ministership of India, India's per capita income has grown substantially faster than the world average. Okay, thank you. That's a very sharp, well, succinct well, question. So, uh, and what, what is your hypothesis? I asked you the question. I mean, I'm here to ask the question. That's quite my hypothesis is in my book. I'm, you know, please read the book. It's called Asia Reborn. I mean, you're giving you're giving a hell of a lot of power uh, to one family. No, right? see, the, I let me let me give you an, is, okay. One sec. Let me see, give you an alternative. So, since you asked me back a question, let me just elaborate on the question a bit. At the point of independence, India's Per capita income was one of the lowest in the world. India's life expectancy at birth was 32 years, the lowest in the world. Africa's average was 38. So when you are, one of the, when you are the poorest country in the world, you should be growing faster than the world average in order to close the gap okay, to the rest I, of the I world. May interrupt, and I, unfortunately, I think... during the period of your family's rule, Thank you very much, India did Mr. not Bhatti. achieve that. Thank you. That's the question. Why? Thank you. I mean, there was a sharp question. You can either decide to take it or, uh, I or can, not. I can take okay. it if you want. Yeah, OK, go ahead. Do you agree? First of all, I, do you agree that India is a success today? Of course. You do. A relative do success you? since your family relinquished the prime ministership. Yes. So, so since then, not before. So you, so you're saying, for example, that I had absolutely no role in Indian politics from 2004 to today. You're saying that? Well, make up your mind. Either I have a role or I don't have a role. You can't, you can't give me both options. Please tell us what your role was. It okay, I'm going to. I'm going to. Point is. That. That the if I may, let's not have this dialogue, if I may. Could you answer the question? I mean, the question may, is... May I? May I? Is, okay, there a, is there an answer to the question? Okay. Yes. Yes, please answer the question. Yes, I've answered the question. Chris, clear question. Hello, hello. I've answered please the question. Answer. I've answered the question. All right. Yes. Question Listen, I'm going to leave it at this. Okay. Okay, I'd like to come over to this group. Sir, go ahead, okay, please. Yes, uh, Short, name, succinct question. Yes, I'll please. make it very fast. Yes, my name is... Uh, uh, Anish Mishra. Okay, the, the thing is, I would like to start by saying that I'm a great admirer of your great grandfather, Jawaharlal Nehru, and I think all the, all the good things that, that, that whatever India is, is, is today is because of the, of the Indian Congress Party. And if you look at the Constitution of India, your party has very successfully um, put in the values of the Congress Party into the con Constitution you, you are, of India. You're you are both going to extremes, right? <laughs> you, I mean, give me, give me something in the middle. <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir, sir, Mr. Gandhi. Whoa, whoa. Okay. I mean, he's saying, he's saying, I'm the cause of every single problem. Yeah. And you're saying, I'm the cause of every single solution. I mean, <laughs> this is crazy. Mr. Gandhi, no, no, whatever there's left to be proud of India today is because of the Congress Party. Okay, the, the thing is that, okay, I want to talk about the idea of India, which you spoke that is being threatened okay. by the... Sorry, can you please ask your question? Yes, right? yes. Okay, my, my question is that in, 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 one of, in one of your speech, very quickly, you said that uh, that India, we should not learn the wrong things from Pakistan. And if, we, if you look at today, India can be compared to, to what uh, Ziaul Haq is. India is living in the era of Ziaul Haq. In fact, when they look at, at us, they say that we thought we were liberal, secular democracy. Today, you turn out to be the, the same as us. So my, my question is this, is that if you, if you, if you, if you come back to power, if, if you um, become the Prime Minister of India, how, how are you going to undo the damage that has been done upon India? All I want is that I want India to, to go back to what it was before Mr. Modi became Prime Minister. And I want to give you, just to conclude, I want to give you one suggestion to put in your manifesto. 
in the next election, you put this in your manifesto called Restoring India. Because I. It called? Called? Restoring India. Restoring India. Yes. Because my India has been lost. When I look at the map, I can't find my India anymore. And I want you to. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. My, my, my India is lost. I want you to give India back to me. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Mr. Rahul. The, see, this, this conversation, right, shows you the polarization. It does. That gentleman thinks that nothing has ever been done by the Congress Party. This gentleman thinks that everything has been done by the Congress Party. Let me tell you what the truth is. India's success is hugely because of India's people. However, however, anybody in this room who thinks that the Congress party is not part of that uh, success, anybody who thinks that gaining independence was not part of that success, that one man, one vote, which the RSS opposed, was not part of that success. Anybody that thinks Green Revolution was not part of that success, anybody thinks Telecom's revolution was not part of that success, anybody that thinks the liberalization wasn't part of the success, anybody that thinks rights-based paradigm wasn't part of the success, needs to write a new book. Okay. Thank you. And, and look, and look, I, I just want to, I just want to complete that. And look, I, I am a person who has been taught to love my opponents, love people who might dislike me. So I have absolutely no animosity towards what somebody who says, I have achieved nothing. I even respect your opinion to be able to say that in this, in this room. I respect it. I differ with it. I will contest it. If you come and have a serious conversation with me, I might even be able to convince you. Or not. <laughs> and, and I'm happy to do that. I'm happy, I'm proud. I'm proud to sit in a room. I'm proud to sit in a room and have a gentleman say this to me. Now you notice something else. Mr. Narendra Modi would never do that. You, you would never, you would never have the ability to say what you said to me in front of Mr. Narendra Modi. And I, and I am absolutely blazingly proud of that. So after this meeting, I want to give you a hug. And I want to tell you, I want to tell you that you are very important to me. Because you represent an opinion. And I respect that opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Should we? Thank you.